All right, so the median we just got done talking about is the segment that connects the vertex of a triangle to the opposite midpoint. So B here is just the corner of the triangle, but it's connected to L, the midpoint of AC. So it doesn't bisect the angle necessarily at B. It doesn't, of course, it's doesn't, not necessarily perpendicular here at L. It just connects opposite corner to midpoint. Uh, and those also, rule of the universe, will always be uh, concurrent. So there's only one point where they'll all intersect in any triangle, and that has some special properties. That one, um, this isn't the only thing it does, but this is the thing our book puts in the theorem, which is which is what it's gonna ask questions about, so this is fine. It's that this point P here is two-thirds of the way from that point at the corner of the triangle to the opposite midpoint. So it's closer to the side than it is to the corner. How much? Well, this distance PL is kind of half the distance of BP. They, they say it this way, that the distance from A to P is two-thirds of the distance from A to K. Uh, I don't know. Let, let me draw another one and put some actual distances in here, and you can decide which way you want to think about these fractions. But it could be, okay, so median, median. I could, you know what? I could just go to Sketchpad and measure these again. Uh, that tells me that, okay, so this is centroid. If this little distance here was 5, I would know that, oh, that's a really skinny 5. I would know that this distance over here would be 10. I like to think of it more as double and half kind of things rather than two-thirds. It is true that 10 is two-thirds of 15, if you think about the whole thing. Yeah, that's true. But whenever you have a two-thirds of the full thing, that means you have kind of half, uh, the little part that's left is one-third of the distance, so one-third versus two-thirds is really a half relationship. Uh, if this little thing was 3 over here, I would know that this thing would have to be 6. Uh, if I know the whole thing is 9, then 2 thirds of 9 is 6, and the other rest of, of 9 is over there. Over on this one, this is the long one. So if this is 4, then I know this little thing down here has to be 2. Okay, we'll do plenty more examples of that. Speaking of which, here we go. So this is centroid. So centroid is the, you know, the, it's, it's two-thirds of the way from y to u, we find r. And it's two-thirds of the way from x to t, and it's two-thirds of the way from z to s. If they give you r u is 5, and then they're asking for y r, oh, that was the example I just did. That would be 10. And if r z is 12, then this other part over here has to be half as much. It has to be 6. 12 is two-thirds of 18. But again, I like to think of half and doubles. It works the same way. All right, so here's another property of the centroid. It's kind of cool. It's the center of gravity. If you were to make this triangle out of cardboard or something, and uh, or sheet metal or something like that, the centroid is exactly where you put your finger if you want this thing to lay flat like a table and balance on your finger. Um, these other centers have different properties that they, that they do. Um, but this one, the centroid, is actually the center of gravity. Um, so this uh, has nothing to do with the problem. It just says, okay, find the coordinates of the center of the triangle with vertices, blah, blah, and blah. All right, at first glance, this seems kind of crazy, but here, okay, so I put the um, coordinates on the, the, grif the, grad the graph paper there for you, on the grid, and drew in, I, I had Sketchpad actually do the mid, you know, construct the midpoints and connect the dots. And it looks like the center right here is on a really nice point, um, but we're not really sure. Is it really at, you know, 5-5? Five, five? Well, let's see. I don't know if they show you how to do this in the book, um, but I have a trick for this. Uh, one way you think we might have to do it is, you know, we could find the coordinates of all these midpoints. You know how to do midpoints. The midpoint from 110 to 5-0, zero, uh, you got to take halfway from 1 to 5 and halfway from 10 to 0, and you can find the x and y coordinates. Well, this one is kind of like the super midpoint of all three of them. So it actually kind of works the same way, but with three points at the same time. So believe it or not, what you can actually do is you're taking, uh, it's the center of gravity of this whole triangle, right? I don't know if that's going to help you remember this or not. Oh, I can't draw on this right now. Oh, maybe I can. Uh, what we do is we actually take the, again, we're trying to find like the super average point in X and the super average point in Y. If I took the X coordinates, all three of them, one and five and nine, and add them all up, can you see this one, and divided them by three. So I took the average of all the x coordinates, which is what, 15 divided by three? That's, oh, this is weird, it gets thick and thin. Like, this is a different piece of software than I was just using. I get five, and if I did the same thing with the y coordinates, oh, weird, look how thick that is. Okay, so 10 and zero and five. Sorry, it looks like a third grader is doing this, but. All right, uh, I also get 15 over three. Oh, that's good, because I kind of wanted it to be five, five, didn't I? The coordinates of this are five, 
five, which is actually yes, this point right here. So that's, uh, believe it or not, how that works. So I'll record that over here. Here's all that same work. So you just take the triple average of all three of those points, and that uh, actually helps you with the coordinates of the centroid. Okay, last uh, center, I believe, the ortho center. Um, out of all the, all the four centers, this one's probably the quirkiest. Last year, one teacher thought this was so funny. It was the, it was the fourth one we learned, and we didn't, it doesn't really do much compared to the other ones. He started calling it the fourth center, which is kind of fun. All right, altitude. First of all, what's an altitude? An altitude is a segment of a triangle, or sorry, relative to the triangle. Notice how all these have had to do with, you know, take the original shape of the triangle and do something funky construction-wise and get these things. Altitude is kind of what it sounds like. It's the height of the triangle. It's this segment here that is the perpendicular segment from any side to the opposite height, or to the opposite uh, corner. There are actually three of them. In this triangle, it's kind of hard to see because it looks kind of like a right triangle. Let's go back to Sketchpad. It's so much smoother. Oh, there's that thing. Uh, let me get back to where I started. Yeah, okay, so here's, here's a triangle that has all three altitudes drawn. So from any one of these points, and I guess it would look more interesting if I spun it, which I can't really do on this very easily. But uh, there's an altitude from every one of these points to the opposite side. So even though it doesn't look like it's going up and down like a height, this dotted line here is an altitude. It starts at this corner and it goes perpendicularly towards the opposite side. Same thing here. From here down perpendicular to the other side and from here over perpendicular to the other side. And of course they move around if you're going to move the triangle around. Oh and look at that. They can actually go outside the triangle. See what's going on here? I have this obtuse triangle. If you look at this one, this is the height of that obtuse triangle. If you think about extending the floor here, this would be how tall it was. If you turn your head slightly, here's the new floor. The floor extends out here. Here's an altitude of that triangle also. This one, of course, is inside. From here, perpendicular to the other side. So, yeah, you might have to extend the sides of the triangle to see why that thing jumped out. If you have a right triangle, the altitudes are right along the side. If you have an obtuse triangle, they jump outside. If you have an acute triangle, they're inside. You can do it that way, too. So yeah, the height of the triangle this way is kind of easy to imagine. The height of the triangle from here down to the other, I'm saying down, it's this way. Uh, you can think of it that way. If this were now the floor, I would take your paper and spin it around, really. If this is the new floor, this is the new height. If this side is the new floor, then this is the new height. We'll do that with actual paper in class. I think it'll be easier to see. Uh, I don't want that. I want the altitude thing. Oh, and then back, I, I do want this. Uh, let me hide this and show you the altitudes. There's the altitudes in the ortho center, or like we like to call it the fourth center. Again, it can jump outside. But all these green lines are perpendicular to the sides of the triangle. It's a right triangle, it's right on the corner. If it's acute, it's inside. If it's obtuse, it's outside. But notice they always are pinned to the sides of the, or sorry, the corners of the triangle. All right, great. Uh, so here's that page I was telling you about. Here's all the centers. And, whoa, didn't mean to do that. Here's all the centers and where they come from. So if you take perpendicular bisectors, you're going to make the circumcenter, and it tells you what's kind of special about that. Angle bisector, etc. Um, they also have other properties uh, that they don't talk about. Um, this one. The angle bisectors make the in-center, and the in-center is the center of a circle that does that, which is kind of cool. If you ever needed the this, to figure out that circle that goes perfectly, you know, the largest circle that can fit and touch all three sides of a, of a side of the triangle. The center of it's the in center, so that's kind of nice. Uh, if you wanted to know the circle that goes around all of them, you do the perpendicular bisectors, and you can find the center of that circle. And no matter what this triangle is doing, uh, that circle will contain all three corners of the of the circle, or of the triangle. Uh, anyway, there's there's uh, other properties for some of these other centers, except for ortho center. It doesn't seem to do anything special. Anyway, I don't need to waste more of your time. I will see you in class. Bye.